Guten Morgen from Nuremberg, Germany. I'm here in front of the city wall here that surrounds the old part of Nuremberg. And pretty soon I'm gonna be walking into the main gate. Today I'm gonna to do the walking route of the old town that is uh, by Rick Steves in his book on Germany. And it's a pretty good walk. It, it hits all the highlights as usual. Uh, his tours are really good. So I highly recommend his books if you're coming to anywhere in Europe. So I thought today I would take you along on my tour and tell you a little bit about the old town Nuremberg, Germany. So I'm standing here across the street from the main train station here in Nuremberg and if you come out of the main entrance and just go directly across the street, you come into one of the medieval entrances of the walled city. The outer walls and the guard towers were quarried here locally. They're sandstone. And if you look carefully, you can see um, the tong marks in them that were used to lift the stones into place. People, a lot of times, erroneously think they're bullet holes. So over here, just to the right of the main entrance, is the Frown Tour, which is a medieval tower that guards one of the original four gates. Of all of the uh, walls, the original walls, 90% of them remain and all of the original towers remain, which is pretty incredible. So I'm going to go into the, this main gate and we will enter into the Handwerker Hof, which is the craftsman's courtyard. This was created in the 1900s, so it's not old, but it's um, created to look like a little medieval town and the little shops. And these are handworked crafts here. This was created for the 500th 500th anniversary of uh, Albrecht Durer, who is arguably the city's most favorite son and benefactor, and most people in the art community think he was the best of all the German painters. Um, and you'll see his house and some of his works in one of my other videos. But we're just going to walk through it. It's a cute little place to do a little shopping. There's a little restaurant here. And I'm just going to walk through that. And when I come out on the other side, I'm going to be on Konigstrasse, which is the main street leading from the train station into the old town of Nuremberg. And Konigstrasse literally means King Street. So this is Clara Kirche, which is Clara's church, and it's one of nine original monasteries that were here in Nuremberg. Not all of them survive, but this one does. And we're going to go in and take a look inside. This building is now shops and businesses, but it was the old granary. In medieval days, Nuremberg had 11 of these enormous granaries, and that was to ensure that the citizens of the city would have enough to eat in case of a famine or a siege. This facade is 260 feet tall and it was completed in 1360. So you'll see on either side of the doors, this is Eve here on uh, the left and on this side of the door to the right is Adam. And up above we can see many other biblical scenes, the crucifixion, the Last Supper. Just above the door here you can see the of Jesus' birth. All right, I'm going to go inside now, so I'm going to have to speak more quietly. The interior of St. Lawrence wasn't completed and furnished until nearly 100 years after its construction, which was just before the Reformation. So 
even though it's now a Protestant church, you'll see typical Catholic adornment and uh, more elegant and fancy than your typical Protestant church. And it depicts the angel Gabriel telling Mary that she will be the mother of the Savior. Just behind the altar is this very tall, ornate tower. This is the Tabernacle Tower. And its purpose was to store the consecrated communion wafer, which Catholics consider literally the body of Christ. And any leftovers from Mass would have been stored here, behind these gold grates. There's a cabinet within. And above tells the story of Jesus from the Last Supper up until his crucifixion. Throughout the church there are a dozen or so of these boxes um, and each was manned by a member of a craft or trades guild here in the city and their job after Mass was to solicit donations from the congregation in order to support families in need that were within that that guild or that craft or trade so um, without any form of welfare in those days this is how they coped and how they supported their own like tower here on the corner is the only remaining tower house in Nuremberg. Um, it was constructed in 1200 before Nuremberg was a walled city and basically it acted as safety and protection for the city. The citizens had to protect themselves. Little protrusion on the side is actually the family chapel and it shows that while even the rich or the rich could afford their own chapels they even they were not above god so the chapel had to literally be outside the house so that's why it was protruding from the main portion of the house So now we're headed into the Hauptmarkt, or the main square. When Nuremberg really began growing and booming in the 13th century, it was actually essentially two separate cities. And they decided to unify, and the Hauptmarkt is essentially where they came together and merged. It was built by the Holy Roman Emperor Charles IV, and it became the center of the newly unified city. And today, this is where you'll find all kinds of festivals throughout the year. Um, we were here once in summer. They filled the whole 
square with sand, believe it or not, and they had beach days and live bands going on. And of course, now for the whole month of December, up until Christmas, they have the Christmas market or the Chris, Chris Kringle market. This is the Frauenkirch here at Market Square. I think they actually say Kircha. Um, but this is on the site of what was once a Jewish temple. And at the time, this was swampy, not so desirable area here near the river. And this is where the Jews were forced to live. When the two separate towns became one, Charles allowed them to force out the Jews and open. 600 of them were killed in doing so. I'm going to go inside. We're going to see some of the memorials inside that are there to represent the Jews who originally occupied this space. This is just the main entrance. Nuremberg's Christmas market is the biggest in Germany and some say, particularly the Germans, that it is the best in all of Europe. Although my husband and I kind of like the one in Prague, but this one is wonderful. This is the third time we've been to it and I typically come down here every day that I'm here if I have time and just walk around, people watch, look at all the wares for sale. It really gets me in the holiday spirit. So this beautiful structure, and you can see people are over there turning the gold ring. It's in the wrought iron surrounding it. And that's supposed to, if you turn it three times, it's supposed to make your wish come true. But the structure that it is surrounding, as beautiful as it is, it's also had a very important function. It supplied clean drinking water to the town because at the time the river was not fit to drink. So much garbage and sewage and all the trimmings from the butcher and everything like that was thrown into the river so they literally couldn't drink it. And this provided the town with clean drinking water. All right, so I'm gonna turn it three times. One, two, three. I can't tell you my wish or it won't come true. I think St. Sebald has some of the most beautiful stained glass windows of all the churches here. They're dark, but they're just really pretty to me for some reason. Stained glass windows in this time period were designed to so tell stories from the Bible. Remember that in that time, most people were not educated and could not read. So this was the way that they could remember the Bible stories, was to look at the stained glass windows in their church. This picture shows the Nazis marching through Nuremberg. You can see this is St. Sebald here. Here's the fountain that we were recently at there in the Haupt Market. And you can see that the German flags were all over the city. Nuremberg played a huge role in World War II history. 
This is where Hitler had most of his rallies. This was one of their parades where they were marching through town. And then later, Nuremberg was the center of the war crimes trials. And you can actually visit the courtroom here where that took place. 